religion the offspring of compassion indeed religion is the offspring of compassion religion sustains everything and once you got a wrong connotation about religion not only your life will be scattered instead you will create chaos all around religion is not any mechanical part of a vehicle that can be changed religion is your intrinsic nature religion is the way to understand the unknown and unknowable religion sustains this earth indeed religion is the outcome of passion i have heard a very religious frog in a well he used to take care of the people by keeping the water clean according to his own understanding one day it happened another frog happened to reach was dropped brought into the well this frog lived in an ocean and he was a sufi frog so when he came the frog from the well inquired where are you from he said i am from the ocean oh really what is ocean so the religious frog from the well took a leap from one end of the well to the other is your ocean so big the sufi frog said it is much bigger than your imagination he took so this frog tried to show that his well is bigger than that of the ocean so he took a double leap is your ocean as big as this the sufi frog laughed and he said it is beyond your imagination so the frog the religious frog from the well said you are a liar there can be nothing bigger and better than my well this is the situation of our so called religious people a hindu lives in his hindu well a muslim lives in his muslim well a christian lives in his christian well and so on and so forth and they consider their understanding their religion to be the best they cannot imagine the oceanic nature they have never been under the open sky so they cannot understand the beauty of the open sky and how does it feel to walk under the open sky and people like these cause more damage not only to themselves they are not causing any damage to themselves because whatsoever they are doing is the expression of their understanding of their narrow understanding of their religion always keep focus always focus always focus attention on all that you do not this will make you humble if your focus is on all that you have known so far you will become arrogant socrates says whenever someone attains to wisdom one thing is still remains to be known that he knows nothing the temple of dalphi where socrates lived the message came that he is the wisest man on earth but socrates was surprised he said i am not i have heard a wise man once came to nanak he argued against god he was atheist he gave beautiful arguments and examples nanak listened to the person attentively afterwards nanak embraced the person and felt grateful that he had come nanak said he is from the village and he is illiterate 
He has never seen such an expression of magnanimity of intellect. One thing is now clear with your intellect that certainly there has to be a power walking behind you and I am convinced that there is God. Otherwise such a beautiful flower can never blossom. The person came to prove that there is no God. He gave very suitable arguments. Nanak did not say any word. When argument came, when argument can be so precise that one thing is clear, that this world is not matter alone. Consciousness is hidden deep within. This man got defeated by his own intellect and arguments. He wrote in his diary that it is very difficult to, de to defeat a religious person like Nanak. He is passive. He never gives you any opportunity to attack him. For a religious person, God is the manifestation of his trust, not any conclusion. God is his feeling, not his thought. God is his heart and heartbeat, not the logic of his intellect. A religious person remains silent about God, not goes on announcing about God. He can speak about meditation only that much which he knows. Such is the quality of a religious person. But this kind of religious person is rare to find. Indeed, it is rare to find. Nana continues in his usual manner. He says, be careful about saying anything and be careful before you say anything. Before saying anything, introspect. It is religion alone that sustains this earth. A slight mistake on your part about religion will disturb the life. A slight understanding, misunderstanding on your part about religion will disturb the life. Religion sustains everything and once you have got the wrong connotation about religion, your life will be scattered and you will create chaos all around. Remember, religion is not any mechanical part of a vehicle that can be changed. Religion sustains earth. Therefore, it is the outcome of compassion. Religion is the offspring of compassion and fulfillment creates the balance between there are three things. Religion is the outcome of compassion. Religion is the offspring of compassion. And fulfillment creates the balance between the three. Allow these three words, religion, compassion, and fulfillment to sink deep within you. These are the three things. Religion, compassion, and fulfillment. Allow these to sink into you. Religion is the basis of life and existence. Without this, life and existence both will scatter. Religion means your essential nature. Just as the essential nature of fire is heat, if fire gets cold, it is no more fire. The nature of sun is light. How can sun remain sun without light? Whenever something loses its quality, it can never remain the same. When man loses meditation, he is man only for name's sake. He never criticizes, we never criticize animals. All animals live in their nature. A dog is dog. A dog never behaves like a cat. 
but man is not living in his nature. That is why we call man by different names. We never call dog as cat or rat. However, we do use such words for man. Man can really be established in his nature only when he is established in meditation. A Nanak, a Buddha, a Mahabhi lives in his nature. Try to understand this word man. A man is man only when he attains to meditation. Awareness is the nature of man. Your essential nature is the way or the door to enter in the nature of the whole. The only way to attain to God is to search deep within the roots of your essential nature. Nanak says, religion sustains everything. This is your nature. It is the son of compassion and through fulfillment establish balance. Compassion and fulfillment are two precious words. Entire life can dissolve in these two words. Compassion and fulfillment are two sides of the same coin. Compassion flows outward and fulfillment flows inward. Compassion flows outward and fulfillment flows inward. Try to understand this. Compassion flows outward and fulfillment flows inward. However, you go on doing just the opposite. When you see a hungry man on the street, you say, let him learn fulfillment. You need to be fulfilled with all that you have. But you have never, but you are never contented. And when you feel contented with all that you have, then bliss happens. The moment you change the direction of these words, life becomes chaotic. And this is what is happening around us. Bliss will overflow out of your fulfillment and poverty will vanish when you are compassionate towards the other. Service to mankind will be the outcome. Then life will become a prayer and that will become the path. And if you are compassionate towards the other and not content, con contented, then you will become a social reformer, not religious. And if you are contented but not compassionate, then you will lead a religious life. Nanak says religion is the son of compassion. Establish fulfillment or contentment to create the balance. One who has established balance between the two will certainly attain to the essence of the basis of life. He will come to know what religion is. Buddha used the sutra as well. Buddha used compassion and awareness or prajna. Awareness is prajna. Awareness within and compassion outwards. Without these, your knowing remains incomplete. Life moves on two feet. A bird flies on two wings. To see the complete scenery, you need two eyes. So to Nanak says, the ultimate journey needs both compassion and fulfillment. Compassion is daya, is a feminine quality, and fulfillment is another one. Only he knows how much burden is there on religion. 
there are many universes still beyond the universe there are many universes scientists have proved that there are at least 50000 earth like us this explains our limitations life does not exist on this planet earth alone according to religion there are infinite earths you cannot see the vastness of the cosmos through your finite thought process as you attain to silence thought process discontinues you are under the vast infinite sky then you can see the vastness of this infinite sky also you come to know the glory of the infinite then you realize that you have been wasting life in finiteness each moment infinite is happening and you are lost in narrow individualistic thought process someone insulted you and you are upset this is remaining in the finite in the narrowness and religion is the essence when you transcend beyond the boundaries of narrowness nanak says many earths are and beyond these there are earths even what is the energy under all this how many species of different color and past all this happens because of his consent rarely anyone comes to know this and no one can really guess this one is stuck dazed with wonder and out of gratitude sacrifices his being at the altar and out of ecstasy and understanding you live your life and you say that whatsoever appeals to you let that happen let thy will be will you the formless remain ever ever as you come out of the finite you will observe the reign of blessings and jewels and you go on in embracing pebbles nanak says when all this happens and you enter the realm of no thought only then you can hear the echoes of the existential sound that which is this you cannot contemplate all thoughts fail and you are in a state of disarray infinite is happening how can you repay the bliss that is happening even if i sacrifice all that have and even many lives is still it is a little bit in such moments you are filled with gratitude here the word that nanak has used are beautiful i can feel the state of nanak as these words overflow this is the culmination of nanak's gratitude जो तुदि भावे साई भली का तू सदा सलामत निरंकार लेट दाय विल प्रीवेल व्हाट्सएवर अपील्स टू यू लेट दैट हैपन एंड दैट इज द ओनली थिंग तू सदा सलामत निरंकार निरंकार मींस द फॉर्मलेस लेट दाय फॉर्मलेस नेचर एवर सस्टेन nana continues in such a state of disarray words fail you are filled with an inexpressible gratitude only one prayer remains on your lips let thy will be done this is the outcome of gratitude and understanding but out of ignorance you want to change the world according to your own understanding of religion and scriptures this can only create chaos all around my presence only god exists my presence is occasional 
You are ocean and I am a wave on the surface of the ocean. Waves come and go. All that you do is good and the rest is not. Many moments will come in your life when you, your trust will shatter. Mind will cry out, what is this happening? Doubts will begin to surface. This is humanness. This is ignorance and lack of understanding. This is the difference between Jesus and the Christ. Jesus symbolizes humanness and Christ symbolizes the ultimateness. Human element is no more. Jesus is no more. Jesus is enlightened and at that moment the being cries out for the ultimate. Let thy will prevail. This is enlightenment, announcement of enlightenment. This is Christhood. That very moment something from the unknown realm descends and becomes part of your being. These were the words of Jesus on the cross, let thy will prevail. This is what Nanak says, Jo to the bhave sai bhali ka, tu sada salamat niram ka. Jesus raised his hands towards the sky. Jesus is transformed. He is no more human. Let thy will prevail. Such is the state of all the masters. Nanak says you search that oneness amidst the five and that oneness amidst the five, the multiplicity is meditation. Nanak continues, as soon as meditation deepens, compassion flows outward and fulfillment flows within and then you are filled with infinite gratitude. You are filled with infinite gratitude. Search that oneness amidst the five, amidst the three if that be your path, amidst the two if that be the path and that you are searching among this diversity is oneness, is meditativeness and as this oneness comes you attain to a state of meditativeness, compassion. Compassion begins to flow outward and deep within. You will experience fulfillment. Fulfillment of a different kind and you are filled with gratitude.